In today's video, you guys are going to be joining me for a tour of my aquarium plant farming business. I haven't done one of these in a while, so stick around. I think it's going to be a good one. Hey guys, my name is Will. I'm the owner and operator of the Aquarium Plant Lab. I've been working on this project now for the last three or four years, and I have managed to build a profitable business around growing and selling aquarium plants online. And in the last year and a half in particular, I've learned tons about growing aquarium plants, and I'm ready to go ahead and share my secrets with all of you guys. So if you're new here, consider subscribing and like the video. I think that's enough talking though guys, let's go ahead and jump into this aquarium plant farm tour. Okay guys, so let's go ahead and start the tour off in the plant room. This is the space that I initially started propagating and selling aquarium plants, and then I expanded into my garage. But we'll go ahead and start with this space and cover everything in detail before heading out to the garage to show you what's going on out there. And do stick around because what I have in the garage is entirely new. I don't think anyone really on the channel other than members have seen what's going on in the garage. And quick note on that, if you guys wanna help support the channel, consider becoming a channel member. You'll get some behind the scenes, sneak peeks and things like that about what's coming. So anyway, let's talk about the plants and the plant racks here. So on the left hand side, I have, starting on the top, uh, four trays of water sprite. And these plants are older. You can see that this tray is starting to brown. I no longer harvest from that. Um, this is gonna be propagated soon. But these are older trays. And then over on this side, we have four younger trays of water sprite. Um, these are kind of like middle-aged, I guess. And then these ones are just being propagated now. Uh, moving on down, we also have, on this side over here, we have mini bulbitis, three trays of that, just sold out of one of these. Um, this plant is great, grows really well in the tray setups, and I like it. It's, it's a really nice, easy, low-tech plant, similar to java fern or anubius. Then moving over onto this side, we have two trays of salvinia minima. This is a great selling plant, propagates very easily. Um, like that one for a floater. Over here we have two empty trays that I'm going to do some experiments to cover on the channel. Moving on down we have Ludwigia Super Red Mini and I'll show you some close-ups of that. Uh, we got four trays of older stuff here and then we have four trays of younger stuff that was propagated I believe about six days ago now so this stuff still needs some time to grow in but I'll be able to harvest from these trays in a couple weeks or so. Next up, we have Ludwigia repens, and this plant is a great plant. If you guys are you know, thinking about starting an aquarium plant business or propagating something that you wanna propagate just that's easy to propagate, this is a great one to start with. It's super easy to grow, very forgiving, so I would recommend that as like maybe your first attempt at propagating immersed aquarium plants. Same deal though, we have four older trays here and then four trays that were just recently propagated. And then on the bottom shelf, we have Java moss. And this is a staple in the aquarium plant, you know, hobby and business. So I would definitely recommend that one. I have four containers of that, three of which are pretty full. And then this one I need to propagate and fill. Uh, if you guys are have been on the channel for a while, you'll know that this is different than how I propagated my, um, my Java Moss in the past, and I will be doing updated videos on how to propagate this stuff with my new method um, in the future. I think you guys will enjoy that for sure. I'm also going to be doing propagation videos for all of these species, so definitely make sure that you're subscribed. Uh, over here, just I have a bunch of you know, equipment and odds and ends that I use throughout uh, the work week. I have tons of boxes for shipping. I've got heat packs, I've got containers for shipping moss and what have you, paper, labels, bags for bagging plants, and so on. Over here, I've got kind of the stuff that I use more regularly. So I've got spray, 
know, a spray bottle here. I got scissors for trimming plants, tongs for packing orders and what have you. Uh, up here, I have a scale for measuring my packages and determining um, postage. Uh, this here is a magnetic stir plate so I can mix solutions and whatnot. Uh, yeah, I do all my video editing here. This is exactly where I package my orders and actually cut up um, most of the plants for propagation. Uh, over here, I've got, um, this is where I basically put all of the bags of whatever it is that I'm selling. So each, each species has its own bay here. Um, yeah, makes it easy. I pre-label all these bags. So then all I have to do when I have an order is select the bags, harvest the plants, put them in a box and ship them on their way. Okay, so that's kind of a look at this space. Now let's go ahead and go out to the garage and take a look at that space. Okay guys, so now we're out in the garage and we're gonna take a look at everything out here, all the equipment and um, the systems out here as well. So these two systems are kind of my bread and butter. I came up with those concepts entirely on my own and custom built them um, about six months ago or so and they work phenomenally well. Uh, but we're going to start with this rack here. So this rack is basically just a spot for me to hold plants that I'm not actively trying to propagate. So there's not a whole lot on there. Um, things that I'm not growing just come up here and hang out until I have plans for them. So that's what's going on with this rack. And then we'll go ahead and cover this system here first. Okay guys, so this setup here is about 10 feet long by two feet wide. And I completely custom built this from dimensional lumber from a lumber yard. This black material here is just a pond liner. So essentially you kind of build this box, put the pond liner in there, and then I secured it on the outside with some of these cleats. And obviously those aren't going all the way through, otherwise it would make the, you know, the interior not watertight. So that's just going kind of surface level into the wood box there. Um, so that's the basic idea of how this is built, just dimensional lumber with a pond liner. For lights, I have LED lighting, and th these are actually the same lights as the lights that I use uh, inside the plant room. And if you guys are curious specifically what those are, I'll have a link in the description. Um, and if you purchase through that link, it is an affiliate link, so I'll get a small commission and that'll help support the channel. So let's go ahead and take the lids off of this setup and take a look at what plants I have growing in here and just kind of a quick overview about how this system works. Okay, so we got the lids off here and now we can kind of run through this system. We'll look at each plant one by one, starting at the left, working our way to the right, and then we'll discuss how this system works kind of in a nutshell. A more formal video will come on this system and how to set one up in the future. So we'll just kind of do a high level look at this time. So starting here, we have moneywort, a uh, great plant, can't go wrong with it, grows really easily. Um, next up, we have uh, Brazilian pennywort, grows like mad, like this stuff will just spread and spread. Um, so typically I'm harvesting from the runners that are trying to run out of the area. That's where I harvest most of these plants actually. Um, we've got some other plants that I don't really grow a whole lot of, um, kind of an experiment in here, uh, Amazon Sword. Over here we have Baby Tears. Uh, next up we have uh, Bacopa Caroliniana. Excellent plant, grows very well, just like Moneywort. Next up we have Alternanthera Renacii. And oh my gosh, take a look at that. The color on this plant is just incredible. <laughs> I mean, it's like a maroon, a full on maroon color. Just wow. Um, next up, we have hydrocotyl tripartita, a great plant, super easy to grow, just like um, pretty much any other type of hydrocotyl in this type of a setup. And then now we've worked our way down to, actually before we talk about that, I've grown tons of plants, tons of species of plants in this system. Um, I would say like most of your typical aquarium plants will grow in here. Java fern grows well in here. Crips grow absolutely mad. I've had thousands of crips, uh, like I kid you not, thousands of crips growing in um, a setup like this. Actually, it was in that one. Yeah, I had thousands of crips in that setup. 
Um, yeah, tons of other stem plants I've grown in this setup as well. So yeah, it's very versatile. <laughs> anyway, moving on down. Um, so over here, you're gonna see I have kind of a, a pond, I guess. And then I have gravel that slopes down to create this pond. Um, the substrate in this system is probably around four inches deep or so. And then, yeah, it slopes down to basically no gravel on this side. And the way that this setup works is I have a pump here, which pumps water into a PVC pipe. And then that PVC pipe runs all the way down under the gravel at the very bottom. And then it pops up using angle pipes or angle connections to what I call like a spray bar over here. And it's probably hard to see, but let's see. Right there, you can see some water coming out. Every two inches, I think, I have an eighth inch outlet. And so water is coming out of this spray bar in its entire length. And what that does, by having uh, the intake for the pump over here, it's constantly drawing the water down on this side. And then, since it's drawing it down and then putting the water in over on this side, that's creating a flow through effect. So the water has nowhere to go but that way back to the pond. Um, so yeah, essentially what that does is creates like a river effect, if you will. The water is constantly flowing through this gravel and providing nourishment to the plants. It functions literally kind of like a river. So I call it the riverine system. Um, I've got some older videos that talk about that as well, but this is like the best riverine system that I've definitely come up with. Um, as far as substrate goes, this is actually pea gravel that I got from a, uh, a gravel yard, essentially. And you can get a, literally a five gallon bucket of this stuff for one dollar okay so if you want to save yourself some money do not buy this stuff from an from like an aquarium store go to a lumber or not a lumber yard go to a gravel yard you know a place that sells topsoil and that kind of stuff and buy it there one dollar for a five gallon bucket so i can't remember exactly how many buckets are in this system i think it was like eight eight five gallon buckets so eight dollars for all of this, and that's crazy. Um, if I was to buy that from a aquarium store, I'd be broke. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's kind of a look at this system. Um, yeah, grows really well. Uh, as far as this system goes, we're not actually gonna take a look at that one today. It basically is the exact same kind of system as this one. It's just a little bit taller and a little bit longer. Um, but the reason, I, reason why I don't wanna show you guys that one is uh, I've recently planted this with java fern and initially when you plant java fern in a system like this, actually in any, really in any system, it doesn't look that great for like the first month or so until it can really establish its roots and um, get acclimated to its new, new environment. And then it just goes absolutely mad. So I'm gonna save this one for later. Uh, yeah, guys, so that's kind of just a, you know, a look at what I've got going on here at the farm. This system, amazing. I'll do a lot more videos on this one and how to set one up and so on and so forth. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing and becoming a member if it's in the cards for you. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.